Weather, weather, weather. Yeah, it's a big deal this week. Welcome to the show. It is we- it is Weather Wednesday here. Uh, the weatherometer on Fantasy Football Today. Good morning or whenever you're listening to the show. We appreciate you being here. We appreciate you listening all the way into week 16. We're getting ready to win some leagues. We're going to talk about that Jets-Jaguars game. Another bad weather game. I'm Adam Azer with Dave Richard. Also, tough calls this week. Dave, are we going back to DJ? Are we going back to DJ Moore this week against the Lions? I think I, I think that there's a case to be made for it. Yeah, there sure is. Uh, Tom Brady against the Cardinals. Him too. Done. Uh, Geno Smith without Tyler Lockett in a good M three Chiefs. How about Ken Walker in that same game if he's even going to play? Um, and of course, weather is going to play a role in some of these tough calls as well. So we are actually going to have a meteorologist on in a little bit. Kevin Roth of uh, Roto Grinders is going to join us. I came up with a little jingle before the show. Can I sing it for you? Please. Oh, the weather outside is frightful, but Dave is so insightful. For Week 16 Fantasy Football, sit them all, sit them all, sit them all. Uh, I got to ask you, so we're going to get into it. Why do I want to throw you from the top of a building right now? (laughs) Um, How much has it has it? affected your rankings when you sat down and did your rankings how, how much did you change things because of weather? it's it's just starting uh it i i ranked as if there were no weather issues and then i i've really only dug into the thursday game and there's weather in that game and so i've, I've started to move some players down there because of the weather that's expected and i gotta tell you like over the course of my career i've almost never reacted to weather this far out but there is so much consistency in in the weather reports for so many places that I, i'm kind of buying in and i want to be prepared and the games are coming a day earlier than normal well most of them are and i'm i'm i am going to have to start reflecting on the weather and uh putting that into the rankings a lot sooner than i normally would because you know me it's i i wait till an hour before kickoff but I, mean- I can't do that this time Kevin's been on our show a lot, and I really love his advice. I, I rely on him as my my weather source. Um, he said in in a tweet to me, "This is literally the worst weather week he's ever seen." Yeah. So so we'll break it down later. Um, so, uh, Thomas, what am I promoting today? <laughs> Anything in particular? Did I miss that email? Sorry, I could I could just make something up. How about our schedule for this week? We've got a live stream Thursday afternoon to help you out. At 2 p.m. Eastern, youtube.com slash fantasy football today. And then we're moving up a lot of our content. So if you watch HQ on Sunday morning or if you watch our live stream on YouTube on Sunday morning, it's all on Saturday morning. HQ's 10 a.m. Eastern on Saturday morning. And the live stream on youtube.com slash fantasy football today is at 1130 a.m. on Saturday morning. And we'll know, of course, more about the weather, assuming my power isn't out from the bad <laughs> weather. But uh, yeah, all right. It's, it's obviously the big storyline this week. Your news and notes, and then Dave's going to entertain us with a story, and then we're going to talk about Jacksonville and the Jets, and then we're going to talk weather. Uh, news and notes. Jalen Hurts has not been ruled out. We're still not expecting him, but he hasn't been. Yeah. Ruled. What's the Vegas line? It was plus six yesterday. Yeah. It, it is reflecting Jalen Hurts not playing. So yeah. I'm buying into that. That's where I'm. It would be off the board if they weren't sure if he were playing. Now it's five. So uh, we'll see. If he five. plays, it would be a pleasant surprise. I told Jamie after our show yesterday, the worst thing that could happen is they name Minshew the starter. They make Hertz active and they say, we'll use Hertz, you know, emergency situation. Mm. And Gardner goes out there and struggles to begin the game. And they put in Hertz in the second quarter and he just has a monster game and no one starts him. He is now rostered in 20% of leagues, Gardner Minshew and someone I'm looking forward to discussing Later in the week, Kenny Pickett is expected to start for the Steelers. Josh Allen was limited with an elbow injury, which, you know, he's been dealing with, but he wasn't on the practice report or the injury report in recent weeks. So he was listed as limited. Sure, it's fine. Zach Wilson's going to start on Thursday. Jonathan Taylor's out for the season. Ken Walker apparently is not guaranteed to play. This is something to keep an eye on here. They're at Kansas City. It's on Saturday. Uh, Still not 100%. He came back, but, you know, it's a huge game for them. Hopefully, Ken Walker plays. I've got massive stat discrepancies on Walker from his past four games compared to earlier this year. Things that you'll you'll kind of nod and you'll say, yeah, I expected that to be the case, but it's it's ugly. Past four games have been ugly. Nick Chubb missed practice with a foot injury. 
and he's mm-hmm. talking like he's going to play, but you know his head coach not necessarily doing the same. So hopefully nobody really dropped Kareem Hunt. That's the good news. They have um, a great matchup against the Saints. A.J. Dillon cleared the concussion protocol. He's starting to become more of a factor lately. Khalil Herbert is off IR, not guaranteed to play, but it seems like Khalil Herbert is trending in that direction. Corey Davis seems like he's likely to play to, uh, tomorrow night. Chris Olave missed practice with a hamstring injury. Traylon Burks practiced in full, like Traylon Burks this week against Houston. Uh, I'll probably put him in that number three receiver range, but closer to a low end. You know how this game's going to go. Yeah. Um, let's see. Tyler Lockett is out this week, but could play next week. Nico Hardman is likely to play against the Seahawks this week. Dallas Goddard's going to play this week uh, mm-hmm. at the Cowboys. Uh, Saints got back Eric McCoy last week, and lo and behold, he had a lot of rushing from from uh, Alvin Kamara, but they lost starting guard Cesar Ruiz for the season. He's on IR. Devin Duvernay out for the season, hurt himself in practice. Baltimore signs Sammy Watkins. Defensive tackle Quinn and Williams trending in the right direction for the Jets. Big IDP player Jordan Brooks uh, for the Seahawks. Linebacker got dinged up last week, hoping to play this week at Kansas City. And Dave, not really. I mean, obviously I know who he is, uh, but a little before my time, probably a little before yours as well, but Franco Harris passed away this morning. Sad news there for Steelers fans and uh, obviously an NFL legend. Obviously an NFL legend. Um, My mom doesn't like football. And she, she, she was a big Franco Harris fan, not because Franco Harris was a Steelers legend, not because of the immaculate reception, not because of Penn state or Pennsylvania. My mom liked Franco Harris because she thought he had a cute butt. (laughs) And the only time that she would say anything good about football while I was growing up was about Franco Harris and his butt, believe it or not, that was it. Uh, my mom, by the way, on Twitter at Sarah Lynn Richard, uh, she's an awesome novelist, mystery writer, children's book, Naughty Nada. Uh, Adam has has read that book by yeah. that at Palm Circle Press. We're fast forwarding now to 2010. Uh, CBS has a setup at the Miami Children's Museum where we are interviewing players. I on that day I interviewed Vernon Davis. Jamie was there. He interviewed Fred Taylor. Um, we, we got there early. We were excited to do the interviews. And someone tells us, all right, the green room where you go before you're, you do your on-camera work is in a classroom on the first floor of the Children's Museum. So Jamie and I find our way there, and we walk in. And there's two guys in the room. It's Dan Marino and Franco Harris. And we, we knew Dan a little bit because we had been watching games at the uh, NFL broadcast CBS broadcast center in New York, excuse me. And so there's a little room where all the guys that are on the NFL today, watch the games. And we were in there with them when we were filming fantasy football today on Sundays. And so Dan knew us, but we didn't know Franco. And so we're, we're just, you know, small talking while we all wait to do whatever we're there to do. And I think to myself, this is the only chance I'm ever going to get to tell Franco Harris, how my mom feels about it. And so yeah, we're we're talking about the Super Bowl and everything else. It's the Saints Cold Super Bowl. And all of a sudden I blurt out, Franco, I just want to let you know my mom is a huge fan and she thinks your butt is cute. Oh my God. And I mean the needle on the record. <laughs> Dan and Jamie are both like, what just happened? And Franco just kind of sits there, takes in the comment, nods his head, and he goes, Thanks. Yeah, yeah. That's and uh and that was it. And it was really fun telling my mom that night what I did. And uh <laughs> she was she was mortified. You yeah. know, Franco Harris, what? Oh my god. So that's so that, that's wild. No one's gonna remember Franco Harris for his butt. Everybody's gonna remember him for basically igniting the Steelers legacy and one of the greatest plays in the NFL, but also a very cool guy. And that's great. Absolutely somebody who should be revered. And it's just, it's heartbreaking that he's passed away three days before they retire his number in Pittsburgh and, mm-hmm. and all that other stuff. So rest easy, Franco. Thank you for everything. Boy, that is going to be an emotional night on Sunday, huh? Steelers are going to win by like 47. Yeah. Holy cow. Oh, sorry to hear it. Tough news. Glad you got a chance to meet him. Uh, all right, let's talk about Jacksonville with the Jets. And we usually preview the Thursday game a little later in the show, but uh, we, I, this, I, I'm losing sleep over this, Dave. <laughs> uh, it was hard enough before the weather became a thing. Wait a minute, wait a minute. 
What game were we talking about? Oh, it's a Thursday night. Na 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 na. And I'm genuinely very excited for this game. I hope I can get all my work done and in time to just sit back and watch it. It's a playoff uh, game. Yeah, it's a huge game. And I, I was, you know, stressing out about it enough before the weather, but it's going to be, it could be very ugly, rainy um, Thursday night in this area. So I don't know. Give me your, give me just your overall thoughts on Jacksonville with the Jets. Do um, you think the Jaguars are going to be good offensively? Well, the potential for heavy rainfall, which is what was in the forecast as of last night, um, makes me nervous. And the winds being between 15 to 25 mile an hour, miles an hour um, make me nervous as well. I, I, was, I was on board with the Jaguars, even in a tough matchup against the Jets. Um, being able to throw the ball and, and get some numbers through the air. Their run game really only started to get going last week for the first time in like, it, it feels like a month and a half that they've really been able to have a semblance of a run game going. And if they if they can't throw and if they can't run, I mean, do the math. They're not going to score a lot of points, and the Jets should find a way to win. If the weather is as bad as the forecast is, I think you got to downgrade both Christian Kirk and Zay Jones. I know Zay Jones has been a hero. Uh, at least 14 PPR points in four of his past five games. He looked great last week. It was maybe his best game ever. Just awesome route running. Didn't drop any passes. Um, was separating from coverage. He really looked like a number one wide receiver. It's a tougher matchup this week. And, and I say that not lightly. I think that Trayvon Diggs is good, but he was separating from Diggs. But I'm telling you, weather is going to be something that's going to spook me a little bit. So I downgraded both those guys. Kirk Moore of a low-end number two wide receiver. Zay Jones of flex. Ingram, you're starting as a fantasy tight end because who else are you going to start? And Trevor Lawrence, a low-end starter because of the weather. So I'm stressed. Trevor Lawrence and Tom Brady. Um, I would almost feel better about Brady if Colt McCoy were going to play because I'm just a little worried that that the Bucks don't blow anyone out. They haven't blown anyone out since week one and two. They had two double-digit point wins. Since then, they they barely ever win. And when they do, it's close. But I have really very little right. very little faith in Arizona of McSorley as a starting quarterback. So, um, you know, if you get the normal 40-plus pass attempts from Brady, I think he can get you in the in the 21 point range. You know, he barely ever gets more than that. Uh, I, I'm worried about a dud from Trevor Lawrence. So right now I'm really on the fence. How do you feel about uh, that matchup, uh, you know, that that comparison, Lawrence versus Brady, Lawrence versus Minshew, Daniel Jones? That kind of oh, stuff. man. They're all in the same range, and I've got Lawrence at the top of the range. But there's probably going to be a move down for Lawrence. Will he go past Brady? Maybe. I, I hear you on Brady all the way. I still think he's going to attempt around 30 passes and, have a shot to get a couple of touches. 30? That's terrible for him. For him, that's bad. Because he's, he's, he's had over 40 in four straight in pretty much every game this almost year. Almost every game he's over 40. Now, the two, blow, we'll talk about this later in tough calls, but the two blowout, you know, two double digit wins that the Bucs have had have been the only two like low pass volume games of the season, basically, for Brady. But that was all the way back in weeks one and two. Um, but you, okay, so Lawrence. Well, he had low volume against Seattle, didn't he? Wasn't that a game he had low volume in? Uh, maybe, I, but it's few and far between. Um, I'm gonna but anyway, right. Lawrence, uh, Seattle game. Where was that? Uh, yeah, yeah he was 22 of 29. Right. And, it was uh, his only game oh, wow. under 40 pass attempts where he had multiple touchdowns. So, anyway, I don't want to talk too much about Brady. Um, Fine. Geno Smith or Lawrence? Geno. Lamar Jackson or Lawrence? Currently Lawrence. Okay. I mean, we don't even know if Lamar's going to play. ETN or Zonovan Knight. You want to start either of these guys? I think I'm going to end up leaning towards Zonovan. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, I have some discouraging stats about the Jets. Uh, okay. How about they are 16th in plays per game? but they're number one in plays per game when Zach Wilson doesn't play and they average, I don't know, maybe around 60 plays per game when he does play. They, they just are so bad when Zach Wilson plays. Um, he has thrown more than four passes to his running backs in one in only one of his eight starts. That was my bad Zonovan Knight stat. I've got, a, I've got no. another one. So it's all going to be rushing and the, and the Jaguars rushing defense isn't that bad. I mean, they, they do give up a lot of points to touchdowns to running backs, but, Sure, and that's what you're hoping for with Zonovan. 
Yeah, why him over ETN? Just because I think he might do more on the limited opportunities that he gets. Don't quote me on it. Put it in pencil. All right. Yeah, I thought ETN looked better last week than he had in the previous month before. Mm -hmm. But I still think this is a tough defense. Yeah. Um, Would you you start Zach Moss over them? I'm not ready to do that. No. Um, Without Zach Wilson, the Jets running backs are averaging almost five yards per carry this season. They uh they have a higher rate of five plus yard plays and twelve plus yard rushing plays than they do with Zach Wilson. And with Zach Wilson, I said it was five yards per carry, just about five yards per carry without him. With him, four point one yards per carry. Uh Garrett Wilson, Zay Jones, Christian Kirk, how do you rank them? As of now, I have it ranked. I have it ranked Kirk Wilson Zay. I'm thinking it's going to end up looking like Kirk Zay Garrett, Garrett Wilson, because I you go back and you watch the, the throws that Wilson had last week. A lot of them were deep passes. This is a nod to the weather. If the weather's bad and if there's significant wind, I don't see how that ball is going to travel the same way as it did last week and for the Jets. So I'm. I'm I'm getting cold feet about the weather already. Hopefully the weather holds off in this game and it's just cold and there isn't much wind and all the players will be good to go. And this is a game that I think everybody can really wait to see on because it's the first game of the week and you can make your lineup decisions based on the weather that night. But when you say good to go, let's say the weather was, you know, in December in New York, let's say it was 80 degrees and sunny or 70 degrees and sunny. It's never going to be that in New York. Oh, five mile per hour. Let's say weather wasn't a factor. Let's say we're in a dome. How much would you like these guys to begin with here? Because obviously you got those the elite cornerbacks for the Jets and look at the last few weeks and, and what you know, Justin Jefferson had 45 yards and a touchdown. Tyreek Hill had 37 yards. St. Brown had seven for 76. Uh, so how much would you like them, even if the weather weren't a factor? I think they'd all be number two receivers. They'd all find a way to be top 24. Kirk would be my favorite of the bunch. And I would think I'd go, I think I know I'd go Wilson over Zay and non PPR. I'd probably lean toward Zay over Wilson in full PPR. Okay. Would you start DeAndre Hopkins over these guys? Yeah. As nervous as I am about Trace McSorley, the answer is yes. Would you start Christian Watson over these guys? And I'm picking I'm picking good weather guys. Yeah. Um, it's going to end up being Watson over these guys if the weather's bad. If okay. weather wasn't an issue, Kirk definitely over Christian Watson, probably Garrett Wilson and Zay Jones over him too in full PPR. Yeah, Ingram, I think is, I mean, my confidence starting him. I don't know. He has fourteen or more PPR fantasy points in three straight games. But right. Jets, that that basically makes him the number two tight end in fantasy right now. <laughs> the Jets are better against receivers than they are against tight ends. They're sixteenth against tight ends. Uh, they have allowed a touchdown to a tight end in the last each of the last two games. One of them was a 51 yard catch and run by Brock, Wright, So very not, not something you can rely on there. Um, do you in general want to avoid night and ETN? I know I asked you who you like better, but do you want to avoid them? You know, we can't pick and choose at this point in the season. Running backs are falling off. Um, in DFS, I wouldn't want to use them. Ah, I, I'll take that back. If the weather's really bad, I'm definitely going to use them in DFS. Rather regular weather conditions. I'd probably stay away from night not from etn so what about i just think i think the jets are going to end up if the weather's terrible i think both teams are going to try and just grind it out and not really throw that much and i think that favors donovan knight and the jets would you start uh jarek mckinnon over these running backs yeah i'm ready to do that would you start cam Akers or latavius murray in their matchup they're facing each other i kind of like latavius i'm not so big on cam Akers. Okay, so you'd start Latavius over ETN and Knight? If the uh, I think I think I'm going to start Latavius over them, yes. All right. Um Najee's over ahead of them, Miles Sanders, Kamara. I'm sure Kareem Hunt would be if Nick Chubb were out. Um okay. And then would you start Christian Kirk or um Devontae Smith? Goddard's coming back, right? Mhm. Minshew's under center, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, I will probably go with Kirk. Okay. We're in a dome for that game, though. (laughs) What a pain in the ass this is. I'm not going to lie. Listen, I I was telling everybody who would listen yesterday that it's it's almost going to be useless to give fantasy advice before the games start. 
Yeah, I know. Or what you have to do is you have to do what I've been doing for the last five minutes, and that's ramble your way through two separate scenarios. Yeah. One if the weather's terrible, and one if the weather's good. I think I'm just going to cancel the starter set episodes this week. <laughs> Let's just bring on 17 different meteorologists and uh, and also bring alcohol. I mean, you could just target guys. that These are the good games this week, the games that aren't going to be affected by weather. Giants at Vikings. Washington at San Francisco. Eagles at Cowboys. Packers at Dolphins. Oh, all of the Sunday games. That's good. Packers, Dolphins, Broncos, Rams, Bucks, Cardinals. Yay, and Broncos, game. Rams. Chargers, Colts. So I hope you have like Keenan Allen this week. Or just the, it, you know. Um, all right, let's see. Am I missing anything from this game? Not like Corey Davis, Tyler Conklin. We don't care about them. Where'd you end up with Zach Wilson? He is currently ranked as a top 20 quarterback pending the freaking weather. <laughs> I, I I can't recommend him if it's if it's terrible weather. Like literally last week, it felt like one out of every three passes was good, one out of every three passes were terrible, and one out of every three passes was a deep ball that he just prayed would be caught by someone with a green helmet. Did oh, how how ridiculous after he throws that interception, which was obviously just a really bad play. Yeah. The throw he made that was caught by Michael Carter, that little lollipop throw. Yeah. I there mean, there were a bunch of plays that were kind of like that after the interception. That's yeah. They learn your lesson, man. All right. Uh, that's oh, DSTs. You could be encouraged to start the Jets or the Jaguars DSTs if the weather's terrible, but yeah. I'd rather start the Lions DST, Bucks DST. Uh, I could bring up my rankings and give you a couple of other. No, that's all right. That's the idea. DSTs. Uh, my big takeaway, Dave, is that if the if the weather isn't a big factor, if it's just rainy and cold and there's not a lot of wind, you know, like normal rain, forty degree weather, because it, it might not be that bad. If it's I not hope it's bad, not. Yeah, if it's not that bad, it seems like you're pretty you're pretty optimistic about the Jaguars passing game. I am because they've they've earned it. They've played well um for the past several weeks zay jones and christian kirk have both done well in their roles obviously jane zay jones playing in a bigger role same thing with evan ingram it's hurting christian kirk a little bit but that's a nice trio it's working out for them and i just i love how trevor lawrence has been playing and he's been getting better as the games go on there is one thing that we should note his starting left tackle is out for the year so they are going to go with a backup there uh against other opponents it would be really bad news against the jets it's just regular bad news hmm. Okay, um, that's going to do it, Dave, for Thursday night. Na, 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 na. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to take a break. We're going to be joined by Kevin Roth uh, very shortly. In the meantime, we'll do some tough calls or read some emails. That's all part of the schedule for today. Uh, by the way, in case you haven't figured it out, Heath is a little sick. He's not on the show today. But we will be right back on Fantasy Football Today. Welcome back to the show, the weather show. I don't have any more songs. And by the way, I didn't write that last night. Came up with it just before the show. So, you know, um, I wasn't working that hard on that. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, all right. We're uh, waiting to hear from our weather guy. Let's do some tough calls for week 16 in the meantime. Well, you know what? Why don't we, we should, let's read some emails in the meantime. So I think he'll be here momentarily. Sure. Okay. So we have a bunch. You know, it's funny. I got, I'm getting, we obviously don't have as many listeners now as we usually do because people are eliminated, but we have maybe more emails than ever. Every, I feel like almost everyone who's listening is emailing. Oh, just kidding, emailers. It is time to hear from Kevin Roth. I promise we'll get to your emails at fantasyfootball at cbsi.com. Kevin, my man, what's up? Hey, good timing, guys. What's happening? What's up, Kevin? Thank God you're here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's it's just a it's the worst week of weather I've ever seen as long as I've been doing this and it's been like a decade. So, can you like make it go away or something cuz we've got leagues to win. Yeah. Can you just like give it to Canada. Yeah. Can, but do you have that it, kind of power? Sadly, it's coming from Canada and it is it's rough timing, right? With fantasy football playoffs going on and uh it, it's it really couldn't be much worse, but we'll break it down. I'll let you know where the trouble is. Thanks Canada. Yeah. So when you lose in your fantasy leagues this week, you can blame Canada. Blame Canada. That's right. So I, first of all, Kevin, I, uh, I read your stuff, you know, every time, anytime there's weather, rotogrinders.com, check it out. Follow him at Kevin Roth WX. I do promote you actually a lot on the show without you even knowing, because I rely on you very much, but um, great Twitter follow. Okay. So what are we looking at? 
<laughs> what are the worst games? Like, what, what are we what are we dealing with here? I do get random waves of followers, and I always wonder where that's coming from. So I guess it was you. So thank you. Yeah, I always wonder how that happened. Um, all right, so I've got these broken down into three categories, and the first one is cold but good enough. Most of these games, temperatures are in the teens or 20s, but winds are light enough where I don't expect it's going to have a major impact, so you just stick with it, especially considering the other games are mostly much worse. Uh, that includes Houston at Tennessee, Seattle at Kansas City, Cincy at New England, Atlanta at Baltimore, and Raiders at Pittsburgh. None of those games have good weather, but I don't think you should fade anyone in any of those games. Does that work? Yes. Yes, Heath will tell you to fade Derek Carr because he's terrible whenever it's lower than 40 degrees, and it will be a lot lower than that. But it, as a general rule, I understand. So that's Houston, Tennessee, Seattle, Kansas City, Cincinnati, New England, Atlanta, Baltimore, Las Vegas, Pittsburgh, cold but good enough. I think that, yeah, I think that's the best way I can sum it up. And I'm not saying that there won't be some minor impacts, but those games are all good enough where I don't think you need to get crazy or do anything too creative. Okay, what's worse? <laughs> okay, now's the second category out of three, and this is expect impacts category. Uh, I've got Jacksonville at the Jets game, Thursday night football. It's sloppy. I mean, it's cold, it's wet. Temperatures in the 40s. It looks like potentially heavy rain in this game. And that's going to impact passing. It's tough to have a crisp passing game when it's pouring rain. It's also going to increase turnovers. So I've got that game as a expect impacts. I also have Buffalo at Chicago in that same category here. Uh, temperature of around 10 degrees. All right, no biggie. But add in a 10 to 20 mile per hour wind, more like 20 mile per hour sustained wind rather. Uh, it's going to put the feels like temperature at 10 below. And anytime you get a 20 mile per hour sustained wind, it's tough to throw the ball deep. It's tough to kick long field goals. That game's going to be pretty tough. Dave, hey, you know, it's interesting because that game has two quarterbacks who can obviously get it done with their legs, Buffalo and yep. Chicago. So, you know, what do you, what do you think about Allen and Fields real quick? I mean, that kind of saves them for fantasy purposes, yep. especially in the case of Justin Fields, who, Really, until last week, he never really counted on fully for what he could do as a passer. But he, he came through in that regard last week, and that was great. And he still ran for a ton of yards. Hey, Kevin, is there a win situation in New York with the Jaguars and the Jets? It's not that strong, uh, about a 10 to 15 mile per hour win. So oh, good. it's there, but it's not enough where you need to really worry about it. I'm more concerned about the rain. And in general, I don't really love to fade guys just because of rain. You can do right. it, but but it's just don't expect 100% output from whoever you plug in that spot. Isn't it more of a visibility issue? And that just comes down to how hard it's raining? Yeah, it's, it's visibility. And the harder it rains, the slicker that ball gets. And you get to a point where it's just harder to, to throw and catch it when it gets too wet. And it doesn't impact every play, but you just see some of these guys dropping passes that you know they would have caught if it wasn't pouring rain. So are those the only two games in the expect impacts category, Jacksonville with the Jets and Buffalo, Chicago? That's it. And I love what you guys said about in that Chicago game, both both quarterbacks uh, can do it with their legs. It gives them that floor, at least. And for mm -hmm. Fields, he still has the ceiling with his legs as well, which is the only upside there. Uh, but there is one more category. Yeah, but you know, I I thought Buffalo Chicago was going to be one of the worst. I'm surprised it's not in this last category here. But uh, what? Okay, so well, I, I want to ask you one more follow up. As yeah. we sit here on Wednesday morning, how confident can we actually be in pouring rain, basically, for Thursday night? Generally, not very confident. Um, usually, I don't feel good about a rain forecast until the day of, and you can look at high resolution models. In this case, the rain is so widespread across the area that I do feel fairly confident in that rain forecast. Definitely check back with me on Twitter at Kevin Roth WX because I will post updates. It's literally all I do. So I will post updates. Uh, but right now I'm fairly confident. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll get some buckets out from my house. So I'm uh, looking forward to the leaks. All right. What's our, what's our worst category? Okay, there's only one game in this, which is why you probably thought maybe that other one would have would have ended up in this bucket. Uh, but this is no fly zone. This is <laughs> this is it ain't happening. You ain't throwing it. You're not kicking it. Uh, it's New Orleans at Cleveland, and it is just horrid out there. I mean, we're talking sustained winds, twenty to thirty miles per hour, 
wind gusts are going to be up over 40 miles per hour. Uh, this is one of the, it, it's also cold, but I'm more concerned about the wind, of course. This is one of those games where usually you think, okay, well, maybe three handoffs and a punt wouldn't be so bad, except it's so windy that the punt might boomerang back over the punter's head. Like, it <laughs> oh, is, my gosh. It, it is going to be really ugly, really tough to throw the ball. I do not like wide receivers or quarterbacks in this game. I don't even like running backs that much, not because they're not going to get their touches, but because everybody knows that's what you got to do. <laughs> so yeah. the box is going to get jammed up. Short routes are going to get jammed up. Um, it's, it's just about as ugly as it gets. Um, I, I've seen guys go off in similar situations, get a couple short touchdowns, but you're asking for a lot to overcome these elements. It's oh, like boy. the, the game last year between the bills and the Patriots. I know you remember that one, Kevin. I do. I do remember that one. Um, I, I think it could be that bad. Uh, I'm not, I don't want to quite put it in that category yet. But yeah, I think it has the potential to be that windy where it's just chaos. Special teams chaos, offensive chaos, pure chaos everywhere. Okay. The over and under is 31 and a half, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you almost and never I like see the them under. that low. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I bet. Schneier yeah. said it was it might have been the la- lowest ever uh opening line, uh opening over. I'm not sure if that's true, but yeah. it's, it's gotta be up there or down there. All right, Dave. I'm sorry, you had a question. Kevin, uh weather in Carolina and Foxborough looks okay. Uh, yeah, that's a couple spots where, you know, I'd consider it not perfect. Carolina, I think looks good. Um, okay. Foxborough cold, not perfect. Good enough. Okay. That's a relief. The Car- yeah. at least the Carolina thing is, you know, we could maybe have to go with Jared golf or something like that. And, uh, people are going to be desperate this week. This is going to be one of the hardest weeks that we've ever had to deal with in terms of advice. So, but thank you. This is very helpful. So, Cold but good enough. Houston, Tennessee, Seattle, Kansas City, Cincinnati, New England, Atlanta, Baltimore, Raiders, Steelers. Expect impacts. Jacksonville with the Jets on Thursday. Buffalo, Chicago. And the no-fly zone is New Orleans, Cleveland. And last thing, what did you, you know, what did you think of what played out Saturday last week uh, with the Buffalo game where everyone was expecting a white Christmas, basically, and it didn't come till late in the fourth quarter? I was standing, I was screaming into my megaphone, play your dudes. It's This is not Snowmageddon. It's going to be fine until late. Oh. And I, I wanted, yeah. it just, it frustrates me when non-weather people get the weather narrative out there because it's wrong nine out of 10 times. <laughs> so I was frustrated would be the answer. I was doing my best Kevin Roth impersonation that day. I was posting updates yeah. from the, the morning all the way till kickoff. We even had a fan of FFT Brandon, I don't know his last name, but he was sending me pictures from his tailgates. And uh, it, I agree. Like, by the time an hour before kickoff, everything looked good. Yeah. I started my guys. I told everybody else to do the same. That's what I like to hear. And you mentioned, look, things change leading up to these games. So make sure uh, follow me on Twitter at Kevin Roth WX. Check out the forecast on Roto Grinders. I keep it updated literally every single day, all day long. Thank you, Kevin. You are- you are a saint, Kevin. Yeah, it's so good to hear from you. I, I was t- truly going to reach out to you, and then I, I went on Twitter and I saw the DM. I was like, yes, all right, we're on. Thank you very much. I figured it was time for the reunion. It's good to see you guys, and anytime there's weather going forward, you know I'm always here for you. You got uh, it, Kevin. You know what? This this was good news, so yeah. I, I'm glad you came. Thank you. Good. Yeah, my pleasure, guys. Have a good one. Okay, see ya. It's good news because I thought that there were going to be as many as nine games significantly hampered by weather and he really kind of made it out to be only three games yeah. and one of the three games is the thursday game and he he downplayed the wind adam yeah he said it was only gonna be 10 to 15 mile an hour winds i can handle that and if the rain isn't as bad as the forecast says and i mean he said that it's going to be bad uh, there's a chance that we can start these guys and feel pretty good about it well if the rain is that bad, I want to go back. There was a week. I want. What was the? Can you look up the week where the Eagles played the Jaguars? Was that week three or four? I believe it was four or five. I can tell you in a second. I was four. I got it. So that was a really bad weather week, a rain week, and you had Jalen Hurts score fifteen points. You had Lamar Jackson score fourteen points. There was one other game with a really good quarterback who was terrible. Because Trevor Lawrence of, had five turnovers, I believe. Yeah, he. Yeah, right. Right. Um. Was there, am I, I'm pretty sure there were three really bad weather games that kind of slowed down. 
Right. Oh, oh it's it was, interesting. It was Josh Allen. He scored 25 points, but he threw for 213 yards and one touchdown. It was Baltimore Buffalo. So when you look at Allen, Hurts, and Jackson, you know, Hurt, Allen did give you the, the 70 yards and a touchdown rushing. But I remember mm-hmm. that week specifically because those three quarterbacks were absolutely on fire. Jackson was coming off two straight, like 46 point games, and all three of them really struggled throwing the ball. And I remember saying, well, the only thing that can stop them is rain. So if it is torrential downpour, I think that is a big deal. And apparently it's going to be pretty bad on Thursday. And if you just go back and you look at that Jaguars Eagles game, you get an idea of what Trevor Lawrence's numbers and what his receivers numbers can look like in that game. Uh, Bad weather. He did throw two touchdowns. They both went to Jamal Agnew. Oh, yeah. They were, they were of four and eight yards. And so without going back and looking at the replay, they could have been pop passes for all I know where the ball travels like a foot. Yeah. yeah. So I'd, I'd have to go back and see, but obviously they were short distance touchdowns from Trevor Lawrence to Agnew, who's more of like a, you know, a runner, an option player, sweep type of guy. Um, Christian Kirk had nine targets, two for 60. Uh, Zay Jones, I don't think he even played in the game. No, I don't think he did. But, it, you know, look, it, it doesn't really – because they they obviously weren't clicking like they are now. Uh, you know, the Jaguars offense much different now than it was in week four. But I just remember specifically Hurts, Allen, Jackson really struggling in bad rain in week four. Okay, let's do some tough calls for this week. I think that was really helpful. I want to thank Kevin for coming on, and he's a great follow on Twitter. So I already talked about all three quarterbacks that I had as tough calls. So I'm just going to lump them together. Uh, they're Lamar Jackson against the Falcons, who in his last eight games, not including the game he left super early with an injury, he was the number 17 quarterback per game. Uh, Lamar Jackson against Atlanta, Tom Brady at Arizona, and Geno Smith at Kansas City. Do you like them this week? I like Geno. I'm encouraged by the weather report that Kevin just gave us. I know that Geno doesn't have Tyler Lockett. I do not care. Kansas City has allowed at least 21 fantasy points to 11 of 14 quarterbacks this year. The three quarterbacks who did not get to 21 against Kansas City. I mean, these are big time guys. Let's see if I know them. Go ahead. Let's see if you can name all three. Malik Willis, Bryce Perkins, and was it last week? No, it wasn't Davis. I don't know. Who's the third? Matt Ryan. Ah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> 33 fantasy points to two of the past three quarterbacks they faced given everything that's going on with uh, weather and injuries and everything else. I think Gino is, is a safe Harbor in okay. the, in the ocean of fantasy quarterbacks. Well, Lamar Jackson is not okay. Um, Falcons statistically have been very good about limiting quarterback production and fantasy six of the past seven have not had even 20 fantasy points. But this P.J. Walker twice, uh, Jacoby Brissett, Taylor Heineke, Kenny Pickett, Andy Dalton, they really haven't faced a lot of great quarterbacks. No. We don't know how healthy Lamar is. We don't know how effective he'll be. I almost have him as a top 12 quarterback by default. We're not even sure if he plays. So I at this point, if, if he's not practicing by Thursday, I think you got to go with Trevor Lawrence over him. Mm-hmm. You might even have to go with Zach Wilson over him. And if you can't. Those are your, truly your only options. If you can't rely on his rushing because he's coming off the injury, then he's not going to light them up passing most likely. It would be a different story if he had been practicing for two, three days before, but he, he missed, he's up to seven straight missed practices. Now Mm. he missed practice on Tuesday. We don't know what he's going to do on Wednesday, Mm. but the the more he doesn't practice, the less likely he's just going to take off and, and be in the swing of things. He's going to have some rust. So Brady was the last one. I I think I, you know, he's got such a low ceiling. He has one game this year with more than 22.6 fantasy points. So you're you're hoping for safety. And gosh, the Cardinals are a really bad defense. They're very bad against the run. Very bad. Right. So the fact that they may not score, the fact that they are easy to run on, and that the the running backs for the Bucks really have gotten a lot better over the past four or five weeks. They're not like tearing it up, but they're not dreadful. You know, it just it gives me a little pause on the pass attempts with Tom Brady. And I think he's like second to last in the NFL in yards per attempt among qualified quarterbacks. So he's 30th out of the 32 or three. So, um, yeah, he's dinking so, and dunking. Right. Um, and he can't complete the deep ball. And Arizona is actually the best in the business at, at limiting the deep ball. So all the more reason to like what Brady does. Yeah, except you just I don't think you're going to it's less likely for him to get a chunk play, I guess is what I'm trying to say. 
I would agree. I think I think he could be safe for 20 fantasy points. I think he can get you 200 yards and two touchdowns without a turnover. All right. Okay. So you just have to weigh if the guy you're sitting for Tom Brady has a lot of upside uh, because Brady probably doesn't. Okay. How about Ken Walker? How much do you trust him against the Chiefs? They are not good against the run, and they give up the second most receiving yards per game to running backs. Um, but he's obviously he's not 100% healthy. How much you trust Ken Walker? Is he a tough call for you? He is a little bit of a tough call, but I think just because of his role in the offense, if he plays, the workload that he gets, you fit him in as a number two fantasy running back. Chiefs in their past four games have not allowed a rushing touchdown. Four yards per carry in that span, so they're starting to settle down on the ground. But you mentioned they are not great against the pass. Walker started to get a few targets last week. Maybe he gets three or four catches this week, and he gets you something there as well. His past four games, he's averaging 3.2 yards per carry. His yards before and after contact numbers are terrible. He's had runs of zero or negative yards on 25.6% of his runs. He's avoided tackles at 18%. That's not good. That looks like a guy that's playing with a bum ankle behind an inferior offensive line. Compare it to before those past four games, he was averaging 5.4 yards per carry. He was getting more than he was getting about three times as many yards for contact as he is now. His 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 negative run rate was still 23.4%, so a little boomer bust, but his avoided tackle rate was almost 33%. So he's somebody who's who it's just I, I don't think he's playing healthy. You're hoping he scores a touchdown and you're hoping that he gets a lot of volume, including some more passes through the air. That could be in the offing. I, I just I think that Seattle will find a way to keep it fairly competitive and not move. Kenneth Walker completely out of the game plan. And this is the first game he's playing without Tyler Lockett. And maybe that means more targets for Ken Walker. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. All those stats you gave, you know, about the rates and the percentage of carries for negative or zero yards. He'd always been pretty high in that, as you mentioned, but what's missing yeah. are the, are the big plays in his first five games or whatever it was uh, before this stretch, he was one of the best big play running backs and yeah. those are just on right now. The avoided tackle rate is really what stands out to me. That in the offensive line. Okay, so Ken Walker, let's talk about what uh Kevin just said about that no fly zone game how, you know, it, mm-hmm. it's just going to be a lot of running. You going to start Alvin Kamara or Ken Walker? I will probably lean toward Walker over Kamara. It'll be a different story in full PPR, but in in half and non, I think Walker's a little bit better. Let's do another tough call here. Maybe more of a tough call in non or half PPR. How about Isaiah Pacheco against the Seahawks? Same game. Mm. And he's a guy who has 82 or more total yards in six straight games. He's reliable for 13 to 16 carries. The Seahawks run defense is completely falling apart. Um, So a a running back has scored 18.9 or more PPR fantasy points against the Seahawks in eight of their last 12 games. It's most of the season. Uh, do you think Pacheco is a tough call? I think he's usable as a low end number two fantasy running back, but I'm just nervous about Jarek McKinnon taking work away and he gets a lot of very valuable work. We've highlighted it for basically a couple of weeks now. And so I'm, I'd rather start McKinnon. I'm glad that that isn't a major weather game. And I think that Pacheco, you can pencil him in for eight or nine, non PPR points, nine or 10 PPR points. And that's the type of running back that you get as a low end number two runner. Yeah, I want to give you the stats inside the five yard line over the last six games. That's when Pacheco really got started. And this is relevant for him and for McKinnon. So in the last six games, no Hardman, no CEH in four of them. Uh, McKinnon has played 14 snaps inside the five yard line and Pacheco's played six. That 14 snaps is second most on the team to behind Kelsey. Kelsey is the only guy who plays consistently uh, in that range. You know, they they mix and match, but McKinnon's the number two guy in terms of snaps inside the five-yard line. Again, 14 for McKinnon, six for Pacheco inside the five-yard line over the last six games. However, um, McKinnon has one target, and I don't know if he has any carries. Pacheco has five carries. Oh, two. Two for McKinnon, five for Pacheco. So Pacheco's actually had more of of the touches but far fewer snaps than McKinnon inside the five-yard line over the last six weeks. Sure. Well, it it helps if you're on the field if you're going to score a touchdown. Yes. <laughs> and it's, if he's not on the field that much, that that's a struggle. And you said it, that's over the past six games? Yeah, that's when Pacheco... So he's not even averaging one carry near the goal line per game. 
No, but five and six games, I think, is actually pretty good. I don't know how many people have, how many running backs have, say, like how many, oh, how many touchdowns does he have from just one? I think. Okay, maybe two. Yeah, and I'm I'm nervous that that's going to flip after he fumbled last week. I know that he came back to play after his fumble last week and all that, but I, I think the Chiefs, you know, tried and true old school coaches. They want to have the experienced guy in their high leverage situations. All right, DeAndre Hopkins against Tampa Bay. Tough call this week with potentially Chase McSorley starting? Uh, Yes, it is tough. You can't look at him as a top five type of wide receiver like you normally would. And I think his non-PPR points have actually been a little ugly lately. His yardage hasn't been great. And now the quality of targets, it went from Kyler, little drop to Colt McCoy. This could be a massive drop from McSorley. But McSorley should know well enough to throw in the ball and Hopkins is very good at adjusting to off-target passes. I'm okay starting him in PPR as a top 15 type of wide receiver. Non-PPR, he's a straight-up number two guy. Yeah, I compared it on HQ on Monday. Compared it to Tyreek Hill. Amazing with Tua. Certainly good enough. Actually, incredible with Teddy Bridgewater in two games. Mm -hmm. uh, one and a half games. And then seven catches for 47 yards on seven targets with Skylar Thompson at the Jets. <laughs> so it just keeps getting worse for DeAndre Hopkins. You know, seven catches for 60 yards last week. By the way, Colt McCoy was even worse than Trace McSorley last week. Colt McCoy averaged 3.9 yards per attempt. Uh, 3.7 yards per attempt. Yards per attempt for quarterback. I mean, that's not a household stat. That is unbelievably bad. 3.7. That's like less than a yard per carry for a running back, basically. I, I don't know if that's 100% accurate, but you get the point. Uh, so it wasn't just McSorley last week. McCoy was terrible too. And they played Denver for what it's worth. But uh, all right, you, you know, Hopkins or a Thursday night guy? I think I already asked you that. You said Hopkins, right? I said Hopkins. Yeah. Okay, Hopkins or Mike Williams? I think you gotta go Williams. All right, next tough call. Much DJ easier to Moore. do that in non PPR than full PPR. DJ Moore against the Lions. So I think you could look at his schedule and say he has had only two good matchups all year, and they were both against Atlanta. And in one of them, he went off 152 yards and a touchdown. And in one of them, he went awful four for 29 on six targets with P.J. Walker throwing for 108 yards on 16 attempts. He's clearly one of the most frustrating, unpredictable players in fantasy, but clearly has arguably the best matchup against the Lions. Starter sit D.J. Moore. I think he's flex worthy and I know that it's going to be tough to trust him as anything more than that. It's going to be tough to trust him even as a flex, but you're hoping that the game script follows suit and that Carolina gives up on their run game pretty quickly against the Lions. Lions run defense has been outstanding and you're just hoping that Sam Darnold throws more than 23 passes like he did uh, in week 15. You're hoping that he can get over 30. You hope that DJ Moore can continue to get about a fourth of them and that he comes through for a touchdown. Certainly volume should be in his favor. And you've, you've just talked about it, and I know you've got stats to back it up. Receivers versus the Lions have been terrible. Think about the Jets receivers last week catching lollipops from Zach Wilson. The Lions couldn't even defend that. Yep. Um, how about last one? Christian Watson at Miami. And Dobbs comes back. Dobbs barely plays last week. Played 32% of the snaps, and he had five catches on five targets. The mm -hmm. good thing is Watson got... Yet another end zone target, three more red zone targets. And he had a chance for two touchdowns in this game. He, uh, did. he ended up with four catches for 46 yards. So that is now 46 to 48 yards in three of his last five games. Christian Watson, is he a tough call at Miami? No, I think you can still start him as a low end number two wide receiver. Easier to do in non PPR. You know what the upside is. And I think it's going to be a little bit of a different game for the Packers. Last week, they took on Baker Mayfield and the Rams and their punchless offense. And now they're getting the Dolphins. Dolphins are going to put points up. Rodgers is going to know that he's going to have to throw a lot unless the Dolphins turn it over or unless the Dolphins completely shrivel up against the run. I think you're going to see Rodgers attempt north of 30 passes. I think Christian Watson will get his opportunities. That's what you buy the ticket for with Christian Watson. You should keep him in your lineup. So you like him better than DJ Moore? Yes, yes. You like him better than Zay Jones? It's going to be really close in full PPR, and it will probably come down to the wind and the rain. If okay. if the forecast is as good as Kevin made it out to be, I will probably take Jones ahead of Christian Watson. Okay, that's Zay Jones. All right, I think Zay. that's about, 
going to wrap up because I was going to ask about Amari Cooper, but he is not a tough call. You got to no. sit. sit him. Yeah. If because that that's the one game where the weather forecast seems to be especially uh, all the different forecasts I've seen, especially in sync. They are just expecting just an absolute uh, nightmare situation in Cleveland. I need to ask you about kickers. Someone just sent us an email. Should I drop Tyler Bass for Brett Maher? And I said, yes. Yeah. So, That's the easiest thing you could do right now is uh, take your kicker. If they're playing in a game, one of the three games that Kevin mentioned um, as being dangerous for weather, just drop them. Go get a kicker that's playing in a dome, and then you don't have to think about it. Three games he mentioned were, um, let me just make sure I got it right. It was uh, the obviously the Browns and the the Browns Saints Saints Browns the Bears Bills and the Jets Jags Jags. Yeah. Okay. Even uh, Graham Gano is a good kicker this week. Yeah, that's man. Minnesota. Graham Gano is a good. Graham Gano is arguably the best player on the Giants. <laughs> oh come on! He has got to give Saquon some credit. Yeah, I know, but got to give Thibodeau some credit. He, Rich he James, has been such a weapon for them. He shortens the field. They are not good offensively, and they score points because he's amazing. All right, emails. By the way, what do you think Schaefer should owe me if the if the Giants beat the Vikings? Oh, I can think of something good. Yeah. It's got to be something that's paid off on the air. Yeah. Is, is they Thomas, be the Thomas, are you musically inclined? Can you sing a song or play a musical instrument? No, I have no musical talent. <laughs> Even better. <laughs> Where's our mascot? I want our mascot. He was up here and then he, he left. Uh, uh, yeah. We have the best mascot. I want everyone to see it. Uh, all right, let's go to your emails here. Fantasy football at CBSI.com. We're not really sure how Schaefer's a Vikings fan. It doesn't really make any sense, but we'll give it to him. Uh, should I flex Christian Kirk or wait and see if Mostert's going to be the main guy on Sunday? And if not, I can pivot to Pacheco. PPR. If the weather's bad on Thursday, make the pivot to Mostert and expect it to be Mostert. You don't think Wilson's going to play? I think Wilson's going to play. I, yeah, but I don't know how much he's going to play or how good he'll be if he does play. Okay. So if Wilson plays, you would still start. Mostert. I'm still going to like Mostert. I'm still going to like. Pacheco. I'll downgrade him a little, but over Pacheco though, because that's the choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Um, that was from Jables, by the way. This is from Paul. Where's Paul from? Paul is from. Paul is from Syosset, New York. <laughs> okay. Have PPR. Uh, pick two, Garrett Wilson, Jarek McKinnon, or David Montgomery. I'm going to lean toward the running backs. Would you consider Minshew or Lawrence over Kirk Cousins? No. Pick three in PPR, DJ Moore, Chris Olave, Jarek McKinnon, AJ Dillon. I'd plan on sitting Olave in the, in the tornado oh, game. The mascot is here. There he is. You, you want me to... Oh, look at him. This is the oh. cutest dog I've ever seen. What's his name again? Labino. It means little wolf in Portuguese. Oh, my gosh. Just, I love it. The FFT mascot. Get He's... him closer to the camera. We don't want to see you, Thomas. <laughs> look at that dog. Oh, my God. Pomeranian, right? Yep. Yep. Oh, Labino. It was his birthday, like, last week or the week before. Oh, I would have sent him a gift. I'm sorry. <laughs> Here's um, a milk bone. Look at that. I mean, come on. You never that's I, that makes me want to get a dog. I really don't want to get a dog, but that makes me want to get a dog. People listening to the podcast are ticked off right now. Why? Because they can't see the mask. They can't see the dog. It's a cute little guy. You can see him on YouTube. All right. This is from Steve. Pick two in PPR. Rashad White, AJ Dillon, Jeff Wilson, Jordan Mason, Alexander Madison, Dion Jackson. Oh, you had me after the first two, White and Dillon. From Adam. Where's he from? Uh, Sleepy Hollow, New York. Yeah. Touchdown only league. I don't play in any of those. I need a flex in a touchdown only league. Antonio Gibson, AJ no. Dillon, yes. Samaj P. Ryan, Over. Gus Edwards, Josh, or Josh Palmer, Juju Smith Schuster, or he can pick up DJ Moore or Deshaun Jackson. Or he only needs uh, one. Yeah. He's got AJ Dillon, and it looks like Dillon's going to play. Has he scored in three straight games? I think so. I think so, yeah. Okay. Um, 
I'm going to stop everything about this show to find out if he has. Broday from Springfield, Illinois. Uh, let's Three see. straight games with at least 70 total yards and a touchdown. Travis Etienne or Leonard Fournette in full PPR? Etienne, if the weather's good, Fournette otherwise. Start two. Uh, you know what? It might actually be a thing where Etienne, if the weather's bad, Fournette otherwise. Okay. I think Fournette might end up being the lead back for the Bucks. I'm not really, I don't really subscribe to that start the running back if the weather is bad thing. Because no. if, okay. if there's an environment that's just bad for offense, I know it could lead to more carries, but it also could lead to, like, like Kevin said, just stuffing the box. No sure. passing game might be bad for, for any running back. Yeah. Um, for and, an, you know, there's a change at left tackle, like I mentioned earlier. For the this game. is now the best matchup in fantasy for running backs. It's the it's Arizona. The yeah. Yep. It's incredible. I mean, look what Latavius Murray just did. Holy cow. Um, all right. Uh, flex two. Christian Kirk, Amari Cooper, Christian Watts, Sit Cooper. Yeah. This is from Corey and Michelle. All right. Started one in five and now is in the semis. How about that? Oh, that's awesome. I love leagues where that happens. We need an RB2 and a wide receiver two in PPR. Zeke, ETN, or Dobbins? I'm starting Dobbins over the group. Oh, boy. Zeke versus Dobbins is tough. Yeah, uh, we can't find a way to start them both. No. Zeke's playing Philly. It's it, The upside is a little ding for him. Did you see I tweeted last night? Jordan Davis is the Jordan Davis numbers really barely play the last two weeks. Mm -hmm. If I had known that, maybe I would have liked David Montgomery. Can I make that my <laughs> excuse? Yeah, I've got uh, Dobbins as a top 12 running back this week. Godwin, Garrett Wilson, DJ Moore, pick one. Godwin is probably where I'm going in a PPR. Okay, half PPR. I need two of these ETN, Ramondre Stevenson, Dobbins, and Jeff Wilson. Stevenson and Dobbins. One of these wide receivers, Juju, Slayton, Peoples Jones, Burks. Hmm. Juju and can't use Peoples Jones. I think I'll go with Slayton against Minnesota. Uh, that was from Joe from Boston. Not sure if I said that. This is from Shane. And where is he from? Shane's from Los Angeles. Would it be crazy to bench Christian Kirk for either Josh Palmer or KJ Osborne? I mean, we'd have to see crazy wind and rain. It would have to be worse than what Kevin laid out for us to do something like that. Yeah, don't do that. All right, that's it for the show. Thank you, everybody. Special thanks to Kevin Roth. Again, you can follow him at Kevin Roth WX. You can see it on wrote his uh, work on Roto Grinders as well. Appreciate everybody for being here. I'll read a few. You know, we have just a couple minutes. I'll read a few uh, YouTube comments. Dak Prescott or Jared Goff? Dak. Um, Minshew or Aaron Rodgers? I believe I currently have Rodgers over Minshew. Let me double check. No, I got Minshew once by that Rodgers. They're back to back at 13 14. Minshew. Caesar is going with Jared Goff against the Panthers over Trevor Lawrence. If the weather's bad, I get it. But if the weather's okay, you should not do that. Ayuk, would you start Ayuk or Dotson over DeAndre Hopkins? It would be Dotson, not Ayuk. And as of now, no, and probably not. Would you start Mark Andrews or Chig Oconquo? I'd consider Oconquo if there's no Burks and if there's no Lamar Jackson. Otherwise, Andrews. Half it sounds PPR. like Burks is coming back, so the Oconquo train could come to an end. Yeah, let's go. We'll go Andrews. Mike Williams, Pittman, or Evans? You have to. How about, how about that's a question? All right, we'll just we'll we'll sit Mark Andrews. Oh, is he still the number two tight end in fantasy? By the way, I I can check for you. I've got it right here. What was the question in the, the chat? Well, I'm about to answer this one. Mark Andrews is. Why didn't this work? Mark Andrews is. Damn it. It's taking much longer than I thought. He is still the number two tight end in fantasy. Oh, no, he's tied with TJ Hawkinson. Wow. In half PPR, he's number three. Goddard on a per game basis. Is high. No, I wasn't doing per game. I was doing full. Season. You're doing total points? Mm -hmm. Tied with Hawkinson. Yeah, he's <laughs> ahead of Hawkinson by three points in half PPR. Wow. All right, would you sit? Who would you sit? Mike Williams, Michael Pittman, or Mike Evans? Evans. Last question here. Um, pick two: Etn, Dobbins, Mostert, Pacheco, PPR. I would lean toward 
Dobbins for sure. I would check the weather. If the weather is okay, ETN. If it's not okay, Mostert. All right. That's it for the show. Thanks, everybody. If there's no Jeff Wilson, I think I'm going Mostert anyway. Okay. We'll talk to you tomorrow, but Dobbins for sure, right? Dobbins for sure. Later.